welcome to today's video lecture. In today's video lecture, I'll be solving previous year's neat questions and discussing the answers. And this is for the chapter Biotechnology Principles and Processes, and we are in part three of the series. So if you haven't checked out part one and two, please do so. The links will be there in the description box below. All right, so let's begin. Question number one. Which one of the following palindromic base sequences in DNA can be easily cut at about the middle by some particular restriction enzyme? This appeared in the year 2010. So we'll look for the palindromic base. Okay. So you have option A. Is it a palindromic base? No. Option B. So A is out. B is also not a palindromic base. C G A T T C G A T T C. So option C is a palindromic base, but option D is also not a palindromic base. So the right answer is option C. So option C is a palindromic DNA sequence. A palindrome uh, is a palindromic DNA sequence, a sequence which uh, reads from left to right and then right to left the same. Okay. So uh, usually what restriction enzymes do, they do is they recognize palindromic sequences in the DNA fragment and they make a cut. Okay, either over here or over here, depending on what the enzyme is supposed to do. Okay, in which area they're supposed to cut. So these are like uh, recognition sequences. Okay, they recognize those sequences and they make a cut there. Okay. So, according to our question, uh, yeah, clearly C, option C is a palindromic sequence. C, it reads the same from left to right, G-A-T-T-C, and right to left, G-A-T-T-C. Okay, so option C is the right answer. Okay, let's move on then. Okay, so question number two. Which one of the following is used as vector for cloning genes into higher organisms? This appeared in the year 2010. Uh, a baculovirus, B salmonella uh, typhi murium, C rhizopus nigricans, and D retrovirus. Okay, so uh, which of them is used as a vector for cloning genes into higher organisms? It is D retrovirus. So retrovirus is used as a vector. The answer is D. That's for the discussion. So retroviruses are used for cloning genes into animal cells so retroviruses usually have rna as a genetic material and it converts to dna via the enzyme reverse transcriptase okay via the enzyme reverse transcriptase but they contain rna of course which when inserted gets converted to dna via reverse transcriptase now this dna gets incorporated itself into the dna of the host cell let's say you have an rna and you have uh, put in your gene of interest there okay which you want to, to to incorporate into that host okay now this gets converted to dna and then incorporate cell itself into the dna of the host cell it has the ability to do that so by disarming the viral component of course uh, we don't want retroviruses are vi viruses right so we don't want the viral component into it and then causing a disease it doesn't make sense okay the, you just defeat the whole purpose of the whole experiment right so you remove the viral component viral component out and so now you just have a vector which you can use okay to incorporate your gene of interest into the host DNA. Okay. So retroviruses can be used as vectors for transferring genes of interest into your host. All right. So uh, clearly if you go back to the question, A, B and C don't uh, make sense. Right. So clearly A, B and C are wrong. D is the appropriate answer for this question. All right, so let's move on then. Okay, so question number three. 
DNA or RNA segment tagged with a radioactive molecule is called this appear in 2010 uh, sorry um, A vector B probe C clone D plasmid so uh, tagged with a radioactive molecule is called B probe we already discussed probe in the previous um, um, presentation uh, I think part 2 uh, for anyway the answer is B for this question so they are single stranded RNA or DNA molecules and they are attached to the desired DNA or RNA fragments that are identified when exposed to the X-ray film. So these uh, single stranded DNA or RNA, they are radioactively labeled. Okay, radioactively labeled. All right. So let's say you um, you run your gel electrophoresis. Okay, you have got your uh, fragments. Now there's a method called southern blotting in the case of DNA. Okay, there's a method called southern blotting. So what it does is it basically uh, it transfers all that DNA fragment that is there onto a paper. Okay, it's like making a photocopy. Okay, so uh, there's a another nitrocellulose paper. Or a membrane okay and these DNA fragments are then transferred onto this nitrocellulose paper okay and this is placed in a solution okay let's say this is the the, the petri plate that you're going to use it's a big plate and you put in that nitro nitrocellulose paper in it after the southern blotting method is done and uh, you put probes into it there's a solution in it okay and you put probes into it the single stranded dna probes let's say okay if these probes complement any of these fragments over here it will automatically attach okay you leave it there for some time and then you come back okay and uh, by then it has already attached the probes have already attached to wherever it is supposed to attach and then when you see it on an x-ray film you can actually identify okay here is where the probe has attached here is where the probe has attached here here is where the probe is attached so uh, this is a useful way of you know doing gene analysis or you know um, finding out um, fragments for any pathogenic diseases so it's a very useful uh, tool southern blotting is used when there are dna fragments okay then uh, northern blotting is for rna uh, fragments okay so basically probes are used over there and they are very useful in um, identifying particular genes that you want to okay so with they are radioactively labeled yes of course when you uh, put them under an x-ray film you can easily identify where that fragment is okay but to answer your question uh, yeah tag with the radioactive molecule is called probe okay let's move on then question number four Restriction endonucleases are enzymes which, in this appear in 2010, A makes cut at specific positions within the DNA molecule, B recognize a specific nucleotide sequence for binding of DNA ligase, uh, C restrict the action of the enzyme DNA polymerase, D remove nucleotides from the ends of the DNA molecule. Okay, so uh, restriction endonuclease are enzymes which makes cut at specific positions within the DNA molecule. You already, um, aware of this now we already discussed restriction enzymes multiple times so the answer is a okay they make cuts at specific positions within the dna and there are recognition sequences okay they're palindromic sequences okay you have let's say you have this whole uh, dna fragment okay and there will be one particular segment let's say over here it's, um, marked in yellow Okay, and this is a palindromic sequence. So it will make a cut here, it will make a cut here. All right. So basically, this is what restriction endonucleases do. All right, this was uh, pretty direct. Let's move on then. Yeah, result in forming sticky or blunt ends, depending on what the type of restriction endonuclease is. Okay, let's move on then. Question number five. In genetic engineering, a DNA segment gene of interest is transferred to the host cell through a vector. 
Consider the following four agents, one to four in this regard, and select the correct option about which one or more of these can be used as a vector or all vectors. Okay, so we are in 2010. Uh, okay, that can be used as a vector or vectors. Okay, one bacterium, two plasmid, three plasmodium, and four bacteriophage. So, uh, plasmid and bacteriophage can be used as vectors in genetic engineering. So, the answer should be 2 and 4. Answer is D. Okay, answer is D. Now, I have already discussed plasmids multiple times, so I am not going to go into that. They are, uh, they are double stranded, you know, circular in nature, self replicating, and uh, they are used as vectors, of course. Okay, so plasmid is 1. But bacteriophage is also a, a use as a vector. Okay, so bacteriophage or viruses can replicate within the bacteria and can take up larger DNA segments compared to plasmids. So this is an advantage. Plasmids cannot take up uh, larger fragments. So bacteriophages um, uh, can be used as vectors to take up larger DNA fragments. Okay. So they can and hence they can be used for working with human cells. So that's an advantage since they can take up uh, larger DNA fragments. They are useful also to uh, in working with human cells. Okay, so uh, bacteriophage or viruses we already discussed retroviruses also. So uh, the other examples are phage lambda, phage M13. These are uh, well-known bacteriophages that are used as vectors. Okay. All right, clear. Let's move on. Question number six: Polyethylene glycol method is used for, and this appeared in two thousand nine. A. Biodiesel production. B. Seedless fruit production. C. Energy production from sewage. D. Gene transfer without a vector. So, uh, polyethylene glycol method is used for gene transfer without a vector. The answer is. D. Okay, so this is a chemical mediated gene transfer. Okay, bioethylene glycol. We've uh, discussed gene gun before uh, previously, but this is also another way where you can uh, uh, whether you know sorry where you can transfer uh, genes or DNA fragment directly into the host cell. Okay, so this is chemical mediated. So chemicals such as polyethylene glycol transfer DNA into host cell without the use of vectors. Okay, they can uh, directly uh, put in the DNA fragment into this host cell okay otherwise you have to go through a very long process where you have to disintegrate the cell wall and then you know put it in and that's a very long method but now there are new devices that are created like bio like gene guns and chemical methods such as polyethylene glycol they're very useful in directly transforming that host cell okay and putting in your vector your uh, gene of interest into that host cell Okay, so polyethylene glycol is mainly used for that. Okay, question number seven. Which one of the following is commonly used in transfer of foreign DNA into crop plants? And this appeared in 2009. Uh, A, meliodogene incognita, agrobacterium tumefaciens. Yes, that's probably the right answer. Uh, penicillin, no. And trichoderma, no. So C and D are incorrect. A is also incorrect. The answer is B. Okay. Which of the following is commonly used to transfer foreign DNA into crop plants? So, the answer is B. Let's move to the discussion. Now, agrobacterium we already discussed also multiple times. So, they contain a plasmid called TI plasmid. Okay. And uh, this TI plasmid is tumor inducing plasmid. And then when it is um, put into the plants, it causes tumor so what scientists did is speed dna is a dna that causes that tumor okay there's a t dna in that plasmid which causes the tumor so if we disengage this t dna hmm, then and put in our gene of interest over here and then put the same thing into that uh, plant then we can directly 
put in that gene of interest that we need into the plant okay so it's a very useful vector in and behaves like a natural genetic engineer in plants so they transfer the tdna which causes tumors known as crown bones and the plasmid ti plasmid induces tumor formation the plas plasmid has been modified which is not pathogenic so now by disengaging the tdna it, it's not pathogenic it's not causing that pathogen you know which eventually leads to tumor but instead uh, we use this in a way that can directly incorporate itself into the host okay directly incorporate itself into the host dna okay so it is therefore used as a natural genetic engineer of plants i will discuss this also multiple times so but basically it's the same thing which of the following is commonly used in transfer of foreign dna into crop plants it's agrobacterium tumefaciens all right so basically this is what it is okay question number 8 gel electrophoresis is used for and this appeared in 2008 a construction of rdna by joining with cloning vectors b isolation of dna molecules c cutting of dna into fragments d separation of dna fragments according to their size so it's d okay separation of dna according to their size okay so here you have a diagram which is taken from ncrt and shows you the gel electrophoresis okay i've also discussed gel electrophoresis before it's the same thing so after treatment with restriction enzyme they can be separated so samples are placed in wells and with the help of electric charge or uh, charge samples move down the gel and separate based on size so the larger fragments that are there will remain on top and the smaller fragments move down so they are separated based on size okay so fragments can be viewed when treated with ethidium bromide okay and placed under a uv light So that's the basic principle of gel electrophoresis. So if they ever ask you a question based on that, you you know the answer. So you can note the note those points down if you like, and then when you're studying, it's easier because now it's all concise and brief. Okay, so separation of DNA fragments according to their size is what gel electrophoresis is used for. Okay. Question number nine: The linking of antibiotic resistant gene with the plasmic vector became possible with This appeared in 2008. A DNA polymerase, B exonuclease, C DNA ligase, D endonuclease. So it is C DNA ligase. Answer is C. Okay. So basically, antibiotic resistant gene is a DNA fragment. Okay, and you have your plasmid, your vector over here. so let's say you want to attach this antibiotic resistant gene over here okay you will you will need to use dna ligase to attach the two gene fragments okay so dna ligase helps to connect the two dna fragments basically that's what it is that's the principle behind this all right clear let's move on then question number 10 restriction endonuclease um this appeared in 2006 a synthesizes dna b cuts the dna molecule randomly c cuts the dna molecule at specific sites d restricts the synthesis of dna inside the nucleus uh restriction endonuclease cuts the dna molecule at specific sites the answer is c okay So we already discussed the function of restrict, restriction endonuclease that they have a recognition sequence present in the DNA fragment, and to identify that recognition sequence and cut, make make specific cuts only over there, okay, not anywhere else. So that's the function of restriction endonuclease. So again, pretty direct question. Let's move on then. Question number eleven. Two microbes found to be very useful in genetic engineering are this appeared in two thousand six, a crown gall bacterium and Cyanorhabditis elegans. No, uh, B. E. coli and Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Uh, C. Vibrio cholerae and a tailed bacteriophage. D. Diplococcus and Pseudomonas. So, uh, useful in genetic engineering are definitely B. E. coli and Agrobacterium. 
okay so the answer is b so e coli is used as a competent host for our dna molecules okay and helps synthesize as proteins from the gene of interest so e coli is easy to use yeah and uh, you can insert your uh, vector or the dna the gene of interest directly into the host cell if you like okay or the vector into it so our dna molecules can be directly also entered into this so this behaves like a competent host okay for that uh, gene Similarly, Agrobacterium, they are natural engine, uh, genetic engineer for plants. So, we already discussed uh, Agrobacterium. Okay, they can be, uh, they contain the plasmid which can be used as uh, vectors for um, plants. Okay, to insert the gene of interest into the plant. Okay, so yeah, E. coli and Agrobacterium are useful. Okay, let's move on. Question number 12. Restriction endonucleases, and this appeared in 2004. A. Are present in mammalian cells for degradation of DNA when the cell dies. B. Are used in genetic engineering for ligating two DNA molecules. C. Are used for in vitro DNA synthesis. D. Are synthesized by bacteria as part of their defense mechanism. Okay, so uh, they are, it's not A or B or C, it's D. They synthesize the bacteria as part of their defense mechanism. Okay, so the answer is D. So, restriction endonites were first discovered in E. coli. Okay, they were discovered in E. coli, restricting the replication of bacteriophage by cutting the viral DNA. Okay, so um, that's how they were discovered. And it's like a defense mechanism for the bacteria. They don't want the bacteria, the virus to continue replicating. So they restricted the replication of bacteriophage by cutting the viral DNA. Now these enzymes restrict the viral replication and hence are known as restriction enzymes or restriction endonuclease. That's how they were given the name restriction enzymes. Okay, and eventually yes, they were um, used for genetic engineering and so on as, as we know. But initially this is what it was used for. That was the purpose naturally okay and if you go back yeah a uh, for degradation of dna in the cell no a b and c don't make sense so the answer is d okay question number 13 the ti plasmid is often used for making transgenic plants the plasmid is found in disappear in 2004 a. Azotobacter, B. Rhizobium of the roots of leguminous plants, C. Agrobacterium, D. Yeast as a 2 mm plasmid. Uh, clearly, it's C. Agrobacterium. The answer is C. Okay, the TI plasmid is found in agro Agrobacterium, which acts as a vector in plants, okay, to form transgenic plants. And we've discussed the function of Agrobacterium before, so I'm not uh, going to repeat that again, okay. You can go back and check my discussion. All right, let's move on. Question number 14. The most thoroughly studied of the known bacteria plant interactions is the, this appeared in 2004. A. Cyanobacterial symbiosis with some aquatic ferns. B. Gall formation certain angiosperms by agrobacterium. Uh, C. Nodulation of sesbenia stems by nitrogen fixing bacteria. D. Plant growth stimulation by phosphate solubilizing bacteria. Then the most thoroughly studied and something that we use even today, obviously this continuous research going on, is this. Okay, since we are talking about genetic engineering, gall formation of certain angiosperms by agrobacteria. And we know now what the function is and how they are used. Okay, now in terms of genetic engineering, yes, um, agrobacterium plays a very important role in plants. Okay, let's move on. Question number 15. Which one of the following bacteria has found extensive use in genetic engineering work in plants? This appeared in 2003. Uh, we already discussed this. Now, agrobacterium seems to be a very important topic because this keeps appearing over and over again. Okay, so um, I'll suggest you study this topic very carefully. Okay, the answer is D. Okay, it's been used extensively as a natural genetic engineer in plants. Okay, question number 60. 
which of the following enzymes are used to join bits of dna this appeared in 2002 a ligase b primase c dna polymerase and d endonuclease uh, which of the following is used to join bits of dna are a ligase okay ligase plays an important role in joining dna fragments so yeah the answer is a here so dna ligase also you know the function so it helps in joining the dna fragments together okay so dna ligase join here join here okay let's move on question number 17 a mutant strain of T4 bacteriophage R2 fails to lyse the E. coli, but when two strains R2X and R2Y are mixed, then they lyse the E. coli. Which may be the possible? What may be the possible reasons? Appeared in 2001. A. Bacteriophage transforms in wild. B. It is not mutated. C. Both strains have similar cistrons, and D. Both strains have different cistrons. Okay, so now this is a, a very weird question. <laughs> Because a lot of it base is based on assumption, I guess, I assume. So if you have a mutant strain R2, which does not lyse the E. coli, but these two strains R2X and R2Y have come from R2. But when they are mixed, then they lyse the E. coli. Okay, only when they are mixed, we hear the question says. So uh, according to assumptions, um, D should be the right answer. Both strains have different cistrons. Okay, so the answer is D. So assuming one of the strains contain a gene that lyses E. coli, both strains could have different cistrons. Okay, if we have R2X, R2X might not have that gene of lysing, but R2Y could have that gene. And when they are both mixed together, then it is able to lyse E. coli. So both have different cistrons, different genes. That is um, based on an assumption. Okay, uh, but if you go through the method of elimination, A, B, and C do make sense. D would be the appropriate answer for this question. Okay, let's move on. Question number eighteen: Which of the following cut the DNA from specific places? This appear in two thousand one. A. E. coli restriction endonuclease 1, B. Ligase, C. Exonuclease, D. Alkaline phosphate. Okay, which of the following cut the DNA from specific places is? Uh, it's not ligase or exonuclease or alkaline phosphate, it's E. coli restriction endonuclease 1. Now, E. co R1. Answer is A. Uh, it's a restriction endonuclease that cuts the DNA at specific sites. Now over here, R is not restriction endonuclease. The R is the strain. Okay. And one is the, uh, the order in which it was discovered. Okay. And ECO is obviously E. coli. Uh, it's a restriction endonuclease that cuts the DNA at specific sites. So that seems to be the appropriate answer over here. If they're talking about E. coli, the restriction endonuclease that are, that are there found in E. coli. Okay. Let's move on. Question number 19. Maximum number of bases in plasmids discovered so far, and this appeared in 2001. A. 50 kilobase, B. 500 kilobase, C. 5000 kilobase, and D. 5 kilobase. So maximum number is uh, 500 kilobase. Answer is B. So size of plasmid can vary from 1 to 500 kilobase. Okay, so there's a uh, a limit to uh, the size of the plasmid that are found. Yeah, that have been discovered as yet. Okay, and the maximum it can be is around 500 kilobases. Okay, yeah, that's what it is. 500 kilobase. Okay, let's move on. Question number 20. Plasmid has been used as vector because it disappeared in 2000. A. It is circular DNA which have capacity to join to eukaryotic DNA. B. It can move between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Or C. Both ends show replication. D. It has antibiotic resistant gene. 
okay now the reason plasmid has been used as a vector because it is circular dna which have the capacity to join to eukaryotic dna that's basically the point of a vector that's why we need the vector uh, because it has the capacity to do that so appropriate answer is a now it can move between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells yeah but that's not really the reason why it is used as a vector both ends show replication not all plasmids show both end replication uh, d it has antibody resistant gene but that's not really the reason why it is used as a vector it can be used as a selectable uh, marker but the fact that uh, uh, it has a capacity to join to a eukaryotic dna yeah that's what it is the answer is a so vectors are Second, vectors are used to transfer foreign genes into host cells to produce their protein of interest. So basically, that's why we are using vectors in genetic engineering because we want to transfer our gene of interest into the host cells and then produce, you know, our uh, product downstream, uh, go through the whole downstream process and produce the product that we need from that particular gene. Okay, so that's what vectors are mostly used for. Uh, so plasmids are used as vectors because they have the ability to transfer eukaryotic, eukaryotic DNA into host cells. That's according to the question that's given to us. Yeah. So the answer is A. Okay, let's move on. Question number 21. The process of replication of plasmid DNA other than initiation is controlled by Sapir in 99. A mitochondrial gene, B plasmid gene, C bacterial gene, D none of these. Now, if you study, uh, this is uh, really beyond scope of NCRT. They know we usually don't really discuss how plasmid replication takes place, but uh, just to understand, there are three stages. Okay, now uh, initiation is the first stage. Okay, then there's elongation, there's termination. Now it is uh, apart from the plasmid. It is also controlled by the bacterial gene. Okay, so the answer is C. Now, other than initiation, the other two processes include elongation and termination. So, now there are studies that have been conducted where termination method of plasmid replication is assisted by the bacterial gene. Now, I'm not going to the details of how initiation is done and how you know elongation termination are done, but just for you to understand that. Um, termination uh, of the plasmid of replication is controlled uh, some part of it is also controlled by the bacterial chromosome okay so there are uh, various uh, protein based host protein interactions that are done and then uh, it results in termination but i am not going to the details of that and um, to understand or to answer this question is bacterial gene Basically, that's what it is. If you go back to the question, so at, other than initiation, uh, there are other steps also that are required, and that is uh, bacterial gene uh, controls that part. Okay. All right. Okay, so we've come to the end of this video lecture, and I hope you've enjoyed today's video lecture, and I hope you've learned something new today. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to MJ Need Biology. And I'm available on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. So you can follow me there for more updates. And I'll see you in the next video lecture. Right. So, bye.